Cappy 724, Roger. Center maintain 2000. Center maintain 2074. Comet 504 to center maintain 3000. 3000, Comet 504. This is going to be the second video uh, of this section aircraft and engine operations. The first thing uh, we were talking about the carburetor, so we're going to start from there. So, the first thing we wanted to cover is like so what happens or what changes occur uh, to the fuel air mixture when applying the carburetor <coughs> carburetor heat so for the carburetor heat what is the effect of that so what happens is like um, so you, again we're gonna be the carburetor heat is gonna start in, uh, introducing the heated air into the carburetor what will happen is it's going to result in a, a richer mixture. What it means is like because the warm air uh, is less dense, so resulting in less air for the same amount of fuel. So it's going to make the, uh, uh, basically it decreases uh, the, uh, uh, it decreases the, the engine power. Okay, what is throttle, like what does basically throttle do? T-H-R-O-T-T-L-A So the throttle is again, uh, allows the, just like the gas barrel, the throttle allows the pilot to manually control the amount of you know, the fuel air charge uh, entering the, in the cylinders. So basically, just like a, a car, uh, with the throttle you are actually uh, like controlling the amount of uh, fuel and air mixture okay what what does a mix uh, what does the mixture control do okay so basically it regulates the fuel to air ratio right uh, uh, all airplanes uh, or all airplane engines has this device called the mixture uh, control uh, by which they actually regulate the uh, the fuel air ratio uh, and the pilot uh, can control it uh, so the purpose of the fuel control is to prevent the mixture from becoming too rich at high altitudes due to the uh, decreasing high air density uh, it is also used to lean the mixture uh, during cross-country uh, flights to conserve fuel and provide optimum power. Okay, fuel injection system. So the fuel injection system basically injects the fuel directly into the cylinders uh, or ju just ahead of the intake valve. Uh, that's where it is located. Uh, basically it has six components and I'm going to name them out. Uh, it has the engine driven fuel pump. Right. It has a fuel air control unit. It has got the fuel manifold valve. It also has the discharge nozzles. These are just the parts of that uh, fuel injection system. And the two other others are uh, auxiliary fuel pump and the fuel pressure uh, flow indicators. This is all part of the fuel injection system. Okay. So what type of ignition system does your airplane have? And again, I'm going to be covering uh, Cessna 150 or 152. Uh, but like you have to check the AFM uh, of your airplane. So the engine uh, ignition system. Uh, so the engine ignition is provided by two engine driven uh, magnetos and two spark plugs per cylinder. So if it has four cylinders, it's gonna have uh, like the uh, it's gonna have uh, eight engine driven magnetos and eight uh, spark plugs, right? Okay. Uh, so the ignition system is completely independent of the aircraft electrical system, 
right the magnetos are engine driven self contained units uh, supplying electrical current without using any external source of current then we've got the uh, dual ignition system like basically what is the advantage of having a dual ignition system so again it's going to increase the safety and uh, because in case one system fails the engine may operate uh, uh, may be operated, operated on the other until a landing is safely uh, made and the other one is the more complete and even combustion uh, in the mix uh, combustion of the mixture so it's like it's going to have a thought like a an even combustion right uh, so basically that's going to improve uh, uh, improve the engine performance because now you are using uh, two systems to make uh, to have an even uh, even combustion of the mixture so again he may ask you about type of fuel your aircraft uses most of these airplanes uh, sorry first let's just cover the we're not gonna be covering that Le we will be covering the type of the fuel too but let's uh, cover the fuel system so all these planes which are the high wing planes right uh, they are using the gravity feed system basically it means that the the fuel or the gas is going to come from the wings uh, to the engine by by virtue of uh, gravity there is no motor involved in it no suction pump nothing like that uh, all it is is like uh, it's going to be coming uh, because of the gravity so the fuel system is uh, gravity f uh, f uh, fed okay what purpose do fuel tank vents have so as the fuel level in the aircraft uh, so as the fuel level in an aircraft uh, fuel tank decreases Uh, a vacuum could be created within the tank which would eventually result in a decreasing fuel flow and finally engine uh, stoppage so the fuel system venting provides a way of replacing fuel uh, with uh, uh, with outside air uh, preventing uh, formation of a vacuum again what it would do th these vents in the fuel system would provide a, a way of replacing fuel with outside air so there will no be no so let's say if it is completely empty when the fuel is going to be drained from the wings to the to the basically the engine now uh, we don't want to create any vacuum so these vents are used to put air in it that's the purpose of the fuel uh, fuel tank vents then okay again he may ask you about particular questions about your aircraft as I said does this plane has a fuel pump so the question and the answer is no as I said uh, we don't need a fuel pump uh, because uh, these airplanes are uh, the uh, high wing uh, single engine airplanes uh, the fuel system is and gravity feed so we don't need any fuel pump okay what type uh, of fuel does your aircraft require so remember that the type of fuel uh, Cessna 150 one, even 172 uh, all of those ones uh, they require 100 ll and the color of the basically there is a dye in it uh, so the color is blue 
color of that fuel is blue and 100 ll okay the last thing i wanted to cover was like can other type of fuel be used if the specified grade is not available again you're gonna be uh, uh, like other type of fuel so again you we, we need to check the AFM um, but Cessna 150, uh, 152 uh, what can happen is like if then air, like uh, 100 LL is not available, right? If the proper grade of the fuel is not available, it is possible, but not desirable to use the next higher grade as a substitute. So that would, that's the, those are the questions that I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching.